All right, Bon John here again. Today we're just going to be walking through the, uh, I don't know, the, the journey of trying to keep this JL driving straight in its lane and uh, also dealing with death wobble as well. And so uh, stay tuned and you'll see that uh, we've actually had to replace a ton of parts on this thing over the past three years. And it's about every 10,000 miles, just about everything's been failing on us. I don't know why. Um, as you can see, my XJ right here has had minimal steering parts replaced in the same time period. Actually. So one of the, God, I'm sorry if it's one of the things I try to do is use these guys now as a secondary way to test tie rod ends. Um, it's not, it's not ideal. Sometimes the tie rod ends will actually pass uh, the usual uh, inspection, which is normally having someone turn the wheel. Oh, Sorry, I had to get a rag, some grease coming out of the boot. I just greased those up the other day. So you're gonna wanna like have someone turn the wheel back and forth. It should like follow the movement of the pitman arm. There shouldn't be any major clunking. There shouldn't be any slop. There shouldn't be any up and down play. A lot of these new modern fancy tie rod ends though have a little bit of spring loading in them. And sometimes they'll look totally fine with the, uh, what I historically have used to diagnose tie rod ends, which is like turning the wheel back and forth really fast. One thing I saw in another guy's video, which I thought was amazing, like last year sometime, is just take some pliers and, uh, you know, put them on the, say for this example, top of the pitman arm and under the yeah see there's no movement there so that's good i think that one's fine i don't know why it, the other day there was some play in it maybe i don't know maybe slapping some grease in there made the guy happy so um it's been driving pretty good for the most part so yeah you're gonna want to like have the the friend the wife the boyfriend turn the wheel back and forth if this thing's like flopping around like you can kind of picture like where that that ball, that the, the, the ball part of the rod end that goes into like the cup part of the rod end should be nice and tight. So you can kind of picture if there was like slop in there, like you'd start to see some rocking motions or some up and down bobbing where this guy's going to be bobbing up and down and that's going to cause a massive dead spot in your steering. Um, same thing in your track bar. So, you know, someone's turned the wheel back and forth. It's going to take five, 10 minutes. You're going to stare at every single joint for any freaking slop, including the looking for wallet out by axle side track bar mount was wallet out from the factory at hundred miles. It was completely wallet out. Um, they use a 14 mil bolt, which is a hair under nine sixteenths. And it was wallowed out about an eighth of an inch. It was like five eighths or 11 sixteenths. Um, I ended up just making my own weld washer and welding it on and trying to fix it that way. Um, so yeah, anyways, yeah, check these rod ends, check these, check for play on anything, including your pitman arm. We had some play, in the pitman arm at one point this nut had come loose i don't know what happened with the factory loctite i loctited the crap out of it and cranked on it some more um we had hit it to the 185 foot pounds torque spec from the factory at the 42 mil so i don't know what happened there another thing that failed around 18 to 20 thousand miles were the upper control arm bushings were ripped to shreds and the way i tested that is i had been chasing down death wobble after replacing the synergy tie rod ends again um and we still had death wobble occasionally is I put a pry bar under the diff housing and this upper arm. And I was with the factory bushings that shouldn't rotate or move at all. Like a rod end, they moved like crazy. And so, uh, I ordered the rock jock joints. They were a huge pain to install, but, um, you know, you get a rod end, a flex joint instead of a bushing. Um, I feel like running the stock arms with the aftermarket lowers for a couple of like a year and a half, I feel like the stock bushings were probably taking the brunt of the uh, flex articulation kind of forces. The the lowers were flexing a little more and the uppers weren't. And it literally ripped them to shreds. I mean, 18K upper control and bushings just blown out. And same thing on the uh, frame side on the stock uppers, man. They were done. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I put the metal cloak lowers on as soon as we got the rig. And so um, I want to say that those metal cloak bushings failed around 30,000 miles. I just put new bushings in the lowers. So 30,000 miles, 
I had this crazy creaking noise. It sounded like controller bushings. It was this weird creaking. I was like, I don't know, maybe it's ball joints, but it definitely wasn't ball joints. You can put a you know heater hose in your ear and listen. And I kid you not, these bushings were already ripping apart at 30K. So I don't, I don't know what's wrong with the JLs um, from the factory. Having someone turn the wheel, getting this thing home day one, you can see the whole frame right here flexing and the track bar mount. I mean, that was like, I drove this thing home white knuckled, aired it down from 42 PSI to 26 for that first year, ordered the Synergy track bar immediately, the brace, that did help a lot. Um, along with, we ordered, I think the Fox stabilizer immediately too and got rid of the factory stabilizer. It was like drivable, but still super disappointing. I told them that their steering boxes were junk and, uh, you know, caster was good, toe was good. We'd re we'd replaced the weak track bar and the, the stabilizer's a band-aid, but what the hell, it made it stiffer. And I told them that they'd be doing a, uh, a recall on the boxes. I bet, I was like, put it in my notes on my file that I, I'm just calling out your boxes are junk. You're probably gonna like have a replacement steering box come. I think the aluminum, something's wrong with the valving internally or maybe the box is flexing too much i don't really know the exact reason but i was like the only thing that makes sense to me is the box is junk and like a couple months later eight months later whatever they did a steering box recall the steering box tsb which has a 300 page thread on a jl wrangler forum and so yeah they've had multiple tsb um recalls since then um so we had the box done and then i started getting a popping out of the box the recall box the new steel box so, well, we might we probably won't cover it because you modified the jeep well it's like okay sure whatever uh i'm just trying to replace all the failed factory parts that lasted eighteen thousand miles i'm trying to replace your factory junk with better aftermarket stuff and so can you sell me a box so they sold me a box for 375 dollars and uh i got a new pitman arm from quadratech and then i ordered the pitman arm jam nuts at the dealer too and you need the electric power steering fluid that's like 40 dollars a quart um anyways there you go. Put a pry bar on your upper control arm bushings. Have someone rock the wheel back and forth. Check every single rod end, every single joint. Check your ball joints when you're done with that. Put the uh, pliers on each tie rod end and look for up and down plate. And when you're done with that, you're gonna want to uh, jack up the front end under the differential. And you're gonna wanna put like a six, seven foot pry bar like under the tires. So like right under there, take a big six, seven foot pry bar, with, you know, with a couple inches off the ground and pry up and down under the tire and see if that steering knuckle goes up and down at all or left to right, if it starts flopping. Cause that's gonna tell you that your ball joints and your knuckles are shot. Um, I tested mine probably 15 times over the first two and a half years of owning it. And they always tested fine. I replaced them anyways. It seemed like it got a little tighter. I don't really know. I've done so many different steering things. Um, you know, we've gone through stock tie rod, synergy tie rod, to metal cloak tie rod. I went from stock drag link to synergy drag link to metal cloak drag link to the, the metal cloak adjuster kept coming loose. Um, I was tightening it way more than I tightened the jam nuts on my XJ steering, which never ever come loose. And I was cranking on this thing with like 18 inch crescents and it kept coming loose after runs. And uh, after the last run, I think I put a 24 inch and just went freaking nuts on it um, on both of these. This one was the one when this one comes loose, the threads are so coarse that the whole freaking drag link will flop up and down like really far uh, before you turn. And so you get this massive dead spot. It's like worse than a bad tie rod. And luckily you can kind of diagnose it instantaneously while you're driving. You'll feel it immediately. The thing will be wandering like across the lane with no direction. Um, that's why I carry those crescent wrenches in the back. I carry like three of them. So anyways, I ordered another drag link thinking that the, the threads had failed from me driving it on loose jam nuts, but came to find out that we put them side by side in vices, one in the vice, one outside the vice, and the threads are that coarse and that kind of sloppy from the factory. And so I, uh, I ordered a curry drag link to have on hand for the next failure. If there is another one, I hope not. Hopefully these hold up for a while. Uh, cup tires can, you know, our tires were cupped to hell and I didn't really know what caused it other than, you know, all the parts appeared to be new. We had bad tie rod ends aren't gonna really, on the drag link, aren't really gonna cause cup tires. So that's why I replaced the shocks and the tires and like basically all the steering and suspension all around 18,000 miles. And then we had to do it all over again 
um, around the time of 28,000 miles. So I got about 10,000 miles. So it's been a rough ride. When it drives good, it drives really good and it's very enjoyable. And then uh, I'll be coming back from a trip you know, I don't do anything super hardcore in this. We do easy trails. I would say they're all under fives. You know, like that thing, I'll take the XJ on anything from Forest Roads to Ford Ice to Rubicon to cool Nevada trails that are really, or a Prince or whatever. And uh, it just seems to love to eat steering. So I don't know. I My theory too is like maybe throwing the hydro on there. Um, I don't know, maybe take some of the load off some of the components, not just not just hopefully prolonging the life of the steering box and not snapping a sector shaft on the trail if I ever put like 37s on it and start, start taking out a Rubicon or Ford Ice or anything kind of fun. Um, oh, we'll see. So yeah, if you're chasing death wobble, you're going to want to check shocks, tires, tie rod ends, check tires for cupping. Like these feel smooth going this direction. You can usually see the cupping. Um, you'll see it. It's going to be going, if you run your hand this way, you'll feel ridges on the tires and you'll usually be able to visually see it, especially if you drive over like dirt, get some dust on the tires or some chalk. Um, check all the rod ends, the tie rod ends, like we talked about. If you're unsure, you know, grab some pliers and pry, you know, the bottom of the rod end into the knuckle or the pitman arm and just see, see if you have up and down slot. Um, and if you're not sure how, how a good vehicle looks, find someone's rig who drives super straight, who's all got brand new parts and freaking, you know, look at their stuff and you'll see like, oh my God, there, you'll, you'll realize that there's no slop. Like, like a rig with all brand new tie rod ends, ball joints, uh, controller bushings, there's not gonna be any slop in anything. You start rocking your rig around back and forth. Um, you start turning the wheel back and forth and you start seeing slop in your rod ends. There's no doubt that they're bad. And the track bar is the, the number one culprit. And yeah, this track bar mount, um, it's hard to see. You got that aftermarket mount on it but I did weld up a piece of quarter inch plate that I had drilled out to nine sixteenths um, for the factory track bar bolt. You can kind of see it like under that stabilizer. Um, anyways, that, I knew that was causing problems from day one. And I know they say torque specs are like 125 or 135 uh, foot pounds, which is kind of a lot. Um, but I was like, that sounds like BS. Like on my XJ, if if the freaking track bar bolts come loose just come loose or the jam nuts come loose after a run i will get death wobble sometimes on the freeway um the stabilizer usually will mask it but i can still get death wobble through the stabilizer. you know even fighting through that stabilizer i've gotten it before and yeah maybe once every six years a jam nut comes loose whereas this thing it's like every run jam nuts all the jam nuts like to come loose i started paint marking them finally um so that's kind of where I'm at. So yeah, you're going to want to check everything. And like I said, if you have a known to be good vehicle, I mean, hell, honestly, go to the dealer and let them let them turn the wheel for you on one of the new rigs. Act like you're going to buy it. And uh, look what brand new steering components turn like. You're not going to see any up and down movement in the tie rod ends. You'll, you'll see all the flex, at the flex at the frame though. Go to the dealer, stock Rubicon with no modifications. You're going to see this whole area flex. I think aftermarket parts manufacturers like all the cool fab shops that make all the cool stuff you know like rough stuff in them everyone's gonna start making frame plate kits for these from what i understand they made a thinner frame on these it was a huge mistake all my xj buddies when i sent them videos of the frame flexing like the like the first day we got this they thought something was seriously wrong with the vehicle and i'm like they all do that that's just factory and so uh i've talked to other mechanical engineers who say that uh it shouldn't I'm not a mechanical engineer, but I've talked to a couple um, that the frame, if it's engineered that way, it should flex by stiffening up. It could be a problem. But then again, XJs are unibody. They flex like crazy. We plate the whole thing front to back and it makes a huge, huge difference. <laughs> Instantly drives straighter. Um, without the plating, you're ripping track bar mounts off and you're ripping steering boxes off. So I still think regardless of whether it was engineered to flex or not, I think the plating is going to come soon enough. And you're at the very least you're going to have the front plating that'll probably go at least down to here i think the mid plating is going to be huge i want to build some rock sliders that kind of behave as like the old school curry frame uh, stiffeners where you just kind of maybe weld them into the frame in a couple spots um the rear plating i don't know i'm not so worried about on these but yeah the front the fronts need it it's crazy amount of flex it would be really freaking cool is if you could sneak in like on the XJ as a cross brace from the track bar mount that goes all the way across to the other frame rail and helps add some rigidity and stiffness. I know that this thing goes all the way across too, but it's like 
I don't know. There's still not enough rigidity here. It's still flexing like, like crazy. So I don't know the answer. It would be cool if some uh, mechanical engineers maybe made us all feel a little better and said, oh, it's supposed to do that. I know um, a buddy of mine who's a mechanical engineer said that. I'm like, dude, with the way this thing wanders, um, I feel like it should not wander. Probably wasn't engineered for the taller lift and the heavy, heavier, taller tires. Um, even though they put 35s on some of these from the factory, I'm just not buying it. Um, so yeah, I, you know, post your, uh, post your comments below about trying to diagnose your JL death wobble. Um, I've never had to chase death wobble in steering failures on a rig like this. I mean, this rig over here that I beat the crap out of rarely has steering wonder even with failed parts it'll still drive straight for the most part i'm talking about like completely you know i have to completely destroy the rear leaves usually to get really bad rear steer which is one of the theories i had on this you know one of the theories i have is like maybe these are really sensitive to changing roll centers i don't know you know i've seen some guys talk about you know raising track bar mounts at the axle to raise the roll center and help add stability which makes perfect sense um, but it's like, dude, this is a two inch, two and a half inch lift. Like usually I feel like you got to go way higher to start messing with that, but who knows? Um, I was hoping the drop brackets would help. They did. I mean, having flat control arms versus steep control arm angles do help with steering issues. Um, do you need it for a daily? I mean, it's going to make it drive a little better. And, uh, this is all the reason why I tell people don't touch these. If you get these from the factory, leave it factory for the, the seven years or whatever of the warranty, don't touch it when it's paid off and you're out of warranty, maybe then mess with it. Um, otherwise you're gonna run into this rat's nest. I've seen so many other people deal with their like horrible steering of these JLs. So many other people dealing with constant brand new parts failures. I don't get it. I've talked to a lot of shops who are kind of chasing the same thing too. Some of these aftermarket parts not being any better than the factory parts. And then you see like YouTubers who like run factory steering and have no problems and never post about steering failures. And I'm like, I'm not, I know I'm not wheeling this that hard. It's only got 30,000 miles. I've already thrown crazy money at the steering, as you can tell, replacing over and over and over again, you know, replacing tie rod ends and then replacing drag links over and over track bars. Um, in the middle of all that, I had ran a rock crawler track bar too. I think I went from stock to Synergy, to Rock Crawler, to Metal Cloak, to WFO. Um, they all had lots of flex in the bushings. And then when I was getting partial bushing failures, like I could just see the thing rocking around the mount. The WFO track bar um, does not flex at all being FK rod ends on that mount. I mean, it's it's the only one I found that doesn't move at all. Um, you know, as far as like the actual body inside the rod end, like flexing, like some of the bushings that are supposed to be super tight didn't quite work for me. You can tell if, you, if you've ever, if you're used to driving a rig with rod ends and used to the tight feeling like this thing where it's just amazing to have that road feel, to know when you move the wheel it, the, that the front end's actually gonna turn and not have any slop in it, like that immediate response. And then going to a lot of bushings that are really soft and it's been a long time since I've had to deal with that, where they're so soft, um, and they're flexing like probably on the mounting bolt, I guess to some degree, like I was seeing with the wife turning the wheel and just sitting there staring at them. Um, I didn't like that. And so, yeah, eventually I'm getting to a point where I might just go grab some DOM from parts Mike or rough stuff and buy some FK rod ends and make my own steering for this when I do the hydro assist. Uh, I just don't want to do that. It's a brand new expensive Jeep. Um, I'd rather have it stay bolt on with, with aftermarket parts and not be custom fabricated, well done stuff, you know, like fabricating my own drag link tie rod. So anyways, post your comments below, please, about your experiences with JL, death wobble and steering wandering, because I've had one hell of a time keeping it on the road for the past 30,000 miles. It's driving pretty good right now, but, uh, who knows where it'll be in 5,000 miles.